I both fast men. What's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is BJ Granville. Thank y'all so much for tuning in and today we're going to be discussing the color purple. I know, I know, I know. I didn't know if I was going to do this video y'all, but I'm so glad I'm doing it because I went to see that movie y'all and my mouth fell open about 25 different times. I wish I could show y'all me in that, like if I could set up a camera and record me reacting because y'all I was, I was, it's a lot going on. But first we're going to go watch the movie so let's go do that. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Um, <laughs> so we're gonna start the vlog here. It's a crazy spot, but here we go. Um, I'm currently in traffic right now because it's time to go see the color purple. So um, I'm gonna meet my friend Mariah. We're gonna turn up, we're gonna go watch this movie and see what all the hubba is about because, hey, big time rush. Thank you. Um, because everybody's been raving about it, so we have to go see it. I heard it made, um, it's, it's December 26th, the day after Christmas, but I heard it made $18 million at the box office yesterday, so we have to go see it. All these people want to see this movie on Christmas. Um, I'm over looking over here. I need to be looking right here. But, um, <laughs> um, so we're gonna go see The Color Purple, and yeah, I'll introduce y'all into, I'll introduce, I will, look. I'll introduce y'all to Mariah. She's my bestie. Yes, ma'am. Cute. How you doing? I'm so good. I'm so happy to see you. When the king threw Daniel in the lion's den, the Lord was in a mysterious place. God said, a mighty angel brought him out again. Hey, y'all. I'm here with. Mariah. This is Mariah. If y'all, if like, if y'all don't know Mariah, let me say how, let me say how I got close to Mariah. We did a show called Bring It On. Oh. And I was Twig. Oh. And she was. Lala. Lala. Of Miss course. La Cienega. It ate, ate down every single day. But yeah, we just saw Color Purple. Opinions. Um. Uh, I feel like I've been born again. Mm. It's, it was. It was. It was. It was amazing. I'm speechless. Clearly. Very much so. And I would do it all over again if given a chance. Oh yes, oh yeah, it was so good, y'all. And we, and we gonna we gonna talk more about that later. But so good, <laughs> so the good. Arms for that, like, so good, girl. Cause the angle, we have to get the angle. It has to be up high, or we have to do a close shot. Praise the Lord. But yeah, y'all. All right, y'all. So um, Mariah gave her a little two cent. I love Mariah. Mariah's so dope. Um, Mariah's probably one of my one of my most like real friends, and I'm just so I, I love hanging out with her. On top of that, though, we gonna get we gonna get into this movie because. <laughs> Y'all, it was so good. It was so good. So first, we're gonna go ahead and acknowledge the cast. Um, we have the amazing. Let's let's start from the top and work our way down. Look in my order. In my order, because I just have to. I have to give my opinion. Y'all, this is my review. I'm sorry, but I have to let y'all know how what what it is that I'm feeling. We're gonna start with Miss Danielle Brooks. Woo! Jesus, 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 Jesus. Y'all, I have never, like, I, I, I know of Danielle Brooks. I know of Danielle Brooks before The Color Purple. And I, I, I don't, I didn't know. I hadn't seen her work, like her work work. Cause you know she did it on Broadway. But y'all, Danielle Brooks, to me, was the star of this movie. Now, of course, like, we know Effie, I'm not Effie, <laughs> Wrong black show, y'all. We know Celie. We know Celie's gonna be. She she is the movie. You know what I mean? We know that, that that's how this works. However, I just think that Danielle Brooks towed a house down. I mean, I don't I don't know what else to tell y'all. I really don't know what else to tell y'all because y'all she she had my entire heart throughout this whole process. Like watching this movie, the second she got on screen, I was like, oh, 
I was like, I'm sorry. I was I was a little bit sorry for Fantasia because she because who Daniel Brooks, she's just amazing. I'm I gotta move on or else I'm never gonna get through it. Daniel Brooks, amazing. Next. Fantasia Barino as Seely. Okay, now here's my thing. I feel like my first thought was, what happened to Cynthia? Bro, Cynthia doing her thing filming Wicked. We're gonna give it to her. But y'all, I love Fantasia. I love me some Fantasia. I remember, no, that that was Keisha. Hold on, what's her, what's her song? What's her song? Um, truth is, I never got over you. Hey, and I was standing in Oh, y'all seen the mic toss when she did it? Here we left, he told me to go right. Like, I love, I love Fantasia, y'all. So this is not to disrespect Fantasia at all. I just love Danielle Brooks. But Fantasia, she ain't down. She ain't down. And I feel like I, I really liked this. I feel like it was. I mean, she's done the role before. But I do feel like it kind of gave her a little bit more of a challenge because I feel like I, I lost a little bit of that twang because she was leaning more into who Seedley is. And I liked seeing that transformation because I feel like I hadn't really seen Fantasia in something else other than like throughout her music career and like every now and then. But seeing her in this was very much, I was like, okay, Fantasia, I see you. I see you. I see you, girl. You got this. You got this. Next up, Miss Taraji P. Henson. Now, she has been the talk of the town for quite a bit right now. Because, I mean, this is going to come out later. And, the, and I'm sure it's going to have died down. But the whole thing with Oprah and them supporting each other and doing damage control and Taraji not being paid well and the ladies not being paid well and what does that mean for Danielle and Fantasia because they're coming up behind her. All of that stuff, very well, well done performance. I, it's very much easy to be like, I'm not being paid enough, da da da, I'm gonna have, but the, whatever I'm doing. But no, she, she definitely deserved, how, I don't know how much she was being paid, but everywhere she deserved more. Because Taraji very much did that role. She did that role. Amazing. Amazing Taraji. I, I, I wasn't, I, I didn't watch Empire when it came out. I was also just kind of young and I was stuck on the whole like SpongeBob Victorious type thing. But um, I saw her in like, I Could Do Battle by Myself and I've seen her in like, um, what is it, Temptation, stuff like that. Um, and she's just a brilliant artist altogether. I really respect Taraji for all the work that she has done. Um, let's get into Corey Hawkins. Corey Hawkins says, Harpo. Y'all, Corey Hawkins, there's something about him. He, he's just going to play all the roles that I want to play. Because we saw him play Benny in The Heights. And now we see him play Harpo in The Color Purple. And it's like, I mean, Benny, Benny, you just, Benny, Corey, bruh, mentor me. Do something because you're dope. You're dope. You're dope. That's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> he's amazing. On top of that, hearing the story about him being like, ayo, Danielle Brooks, I want to play her Harpo. Ah! <laughs> Jesus. Okay. He's amazing. Um, I love I love his voice. His voice anytime like when I when I hear the songs. Go on, and Daniel Brooks's voice and Taraji's voice and Fantasia's voice. Duh. Like everybody can sing. That's no pause. Everybody can sing. Like nobody nobody's just. I'm gonna do a little bit here. I'm gonna do a little bit. No, we are gonna get the riffs, the runs, the twang, the dynamics. We're gonna get all of it. We're gonna get all of it. Um, first and speaking of dynamics and, and tone, David Allen Greer and Tamala Mann. I was so happy to see them, y'all, because I love them. David Allen Gray, he was just in, I, I think it was, was it Take Me Out? Or no, it was something else, on Broadway. Um, and I didn't know that he did the whole theatrical side. I, I remember him in the Carmichael show, and I remember him in some other stuff. And so I thought he stuck with the whole, like, sitcom, you know, black TV show, maybe a movie every now and then. But I like he, seeing him in this musical theater type situation, or theater in general, because I just feel like it brings a, a next level of maturity to his acting. And... It's, it's real. You know what I mean? I love him for that. And then Tamla Man, God works in mysterious. Yes, he do. Because one thing I know about Tamla Man, she's going to sing as if she can't sing no more. That's that's just what she's going to do. Because she is that good. Literally, y'all. She is that good. Oh, my gosh. I love Tamla Man. So happy to see her. So happy to see Whoopi um, pop up. Uh, there are some other people that popped up. But I was like, they just going to put everybody in the movie. they just going to put everybody in the movie. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know uh, if I want to go through any other... Who else in the cast? Hold on, y'all. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, y'all. This is going to be the last two people I talk about. And um, it's ironic that these are the last two people because they're actually the first two people. Hallie and... I'm sorry. What's her name? Hallie and Felicia. They were good. They were really good. I think Felicia deserved more. Whatever she got... Whatever happened, because I know she, was, she wasn't invited to the awards show. And I was like, she was in 30, 45 minutes of the movie, I think. 
If I'm, I may be mistaken, but she, the, and the fact that she auditioned for Celia and was like, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna make me look older. And then she still got Celia, but young Celia. And she looked just like Fantasia. Y'all, she ate down. She was really good. Really good. Like, she's just, she's just a great artist and a great actress. Like, I feel like her work is just beautiful. And then Hallie, I love Hallie. You know, she, my little mermaid. Or, I don't know if y'all knew her back, back in the Let It Shine days, but I did. I love, I love Hallie. Hallie just gonna bring some sunshine to any situation. I love seeing them two together and they just really compliment each other really well. So yeah, that is the cast of The Color Purple. <laughs> Alright y'all, so next up we're gonna go ahead and talk about this story. Now, I done heard all the stuff on Facebook, I done seen all the stuff on Instagram, and I would like to apologize on behalf of anybody, I mean it's not me, it's definitely not me, but I can apologize, apologize on behalf of anybody that went up in that, went, went up into that, bought that ticket for that musical and got mad when it was a musical. Y'all, we really have to see things. Anytime we do something new, it's going to be new in some type of way. And y'all know the musical done came out. Y'all know Fantasia was in the musical. Y'all know Danielle Brooks was in the musical on Broadway. So y'all had to know that they were going to take it, the musical. Right? I mean, you're going to cast Corey Hawkins. He was just in In the Heights. Like, come on now. We knew it was going to go somewhere. We knew it was going to go. It's, I mean, I guess maybe not everybody knew, but I knew. And I was excited for it. Um, because I'm going to be real. I haven't seen The Color Purple. I've seen clips. I've seen the part where she jumped across the table. I've seen the, um, I love I do. Well, I kill him, daddy, before I let beat me. <laughs> you know, I've seen stuff like that. But I hadn't seen the movie. And I feel like this is just a great introduction for, like, people in my generation and younger to see the movie. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, is it built for, like, younger audiences? No. But um, it definitely gave what it needed to give. I mean, I feel like it very much inf uh, it, it brought in some of these moments that are more more useful and more understand it and understood now in today's age instead of back when it was made. And I like how they tied some through lines, especially with Effie's storyline, how her mom taught her to sew and then she ended up opening a shop. You know what I mean? Like you're tying these lines together so it's not like, oh, this just happened. It's like, oh, remember when this happened and that happened and then that's what caused that to happen. I feel like the story was put together beautifully. I mean, I feel like it was done really well. I think, um, I think after thinking, after like going back and kind of seeing some of the stuff from the older Color Purple, I really enjoyed this version of the Color Purple. I mean, of course, like anytime you add music to a show, you're gonna then, then you're gonna, you're going to then gain dancing, etc. So that's gonna bring the story up even more. But I just feel like the way they told the story, um, I think it was just beautiful. The way it was shot, etc. I mean, we'll talk about a little bit more of that later. But I feel like this this story is so important to the world. And um, especially as a man watching that, like I, there was very much a lot of things that I was able to tune in on. And I was like, wow. Like, oh my gosh. Like, Lord Jesus. Like, I, like I was watching and I was like, oof, oof. Because it's just like, you, you it's, it's so much that people don't see in the world and that people that don't, didn't even realize was happening back then. Um, and that may still be happening, but it's like, it's new. No, it's not. This has been going on since way back when. So um, I really feel like it was just a breath of fresh air seeing it done this way and not, and not making it feel like it's an old story. Like, no, honey, stuff like this happens now. And another more important reason for us to work on how we treat people, how we, how we live life, etc. So yeah, that is about the story. So I already mentioned Tamla um, with this mysterious way, so we can go ahead and get into the music. We can get into the music. Um, Y'all, I, I, I said it earlier, everybody can sing. So it's like, it's not hard for the music to slap down because everybody can sing. So we open the show, we have Celie and, um, we have young Celie and young, um, what's, what's the baby name? Nettie. Nettie. Yes, Sister Nettie. Mm -hmm. Um, we have we have them singing this song and they, they they just have cute little voices. I love it. And then we and then Tamla Man comes and go on, work in my I mean it's gonna it's gonna huh, it's gonna shout every time. So like that's what that's what's gonna give for that part. Um and then we get into other songs like What About Love, Taraji. That's another thing. Taraji surprised some people. Because I feel like we didn't see Taraji as a singer. Because we, we saw we saw her in Empire and she was cookie. And she'll forever be cookie to some people. But um, after seeing videos of her working with Stevie Mackey, I was like, oh, she's working on something. She's working on something. Because they did the, hey, hey, hey. And, they, and they were going up and doing all these different things. And I was like, uh-oh, okay, Tara you better watch out for Taraji because she's coming. Um, and then seeing that and, hear, and seeing her sing like that, I was like, yes, I love moments like that when you get to see some of our favorite people kind of even more break our expectation. Um, I think that also in that whole realm, I feel like there's this new type of, um, 
I don't know, and I'm gonna get into this when, it, when I talk about choreography later, but um, there's this new type of field that we begin to work into when we think about, um, when we think about movie musicals now. Because now I feel like after watching In the Heights, um, Wonka, and um, Color Purple, I feel like they all kind of have that same look and same feel and I feel like the music is gonna it, I feel like the music just fills the space because now we're almost working with space like more open spaces I think um to where people can perform at you know what I mean and that's gonna give us that musical theater aspect of the movie musical and I feel like when we do that with our music we're gonna then inform how everything else is gonna go about and of course like I mentioned in the Won in the Wonka review music is gonna underscore the whole story and it's gonna it's gonna build this space where we can then allow um realizations to happen we allow objectives to be met we allow strategies to be created you know I mean? stuff like that so i really feel like that i really feel like the music throughout this show i feel like it was less it was definitely less than wonka less less underscoring but i do feel like literally just moments of air and then something drives into the next thing it's like oh my gosh it's brilliant because these moments have to be taken in in this musical like it's not just a little kiki haha -ha, no like these moments especially when you think about moments um that happen with sophia's character and and celie's character you really think about like you really you take you take a moment and you're like wow like what was going on back then and what story or whose story is this that I don't even, you know what I mean? Like, I, that we didn't even know this was their story, too. You know what I mean? People are sitting in the audience realizing that these things have happened to people that they know, that these things are happening to them. And it's like, oh my goodness, we need to take the moments to emphasize that so that people don't miss their moment of understanding and their moment of uh, catharsis. So, yes, uh, great work throughout the music. Absolutely. All right, y'all. So now let's go ahead and take a dive into this direction, direction and choreography. Um, we're gonna start with direction because Blitz Bazawul, he was the director of this production, and um, I just, I think he sees the world in such an interesting way to then be able to translate this story to such a new time. I really don't think that a lot of other people could have done it the way that he did it. There are so many things that I look at and I'm like, wow. Like, who thought? that was gonna you know what I mean like who who else would have been able to be like that's important highlight that like and then keep it moving because not everybody has that gift you know and especially when it comes to like the whole realm of like spiritual gifts etc like the way people see things and the way people have um understanding of other things it's not going to be something that's universal it's going to be something that people somebody one person pays attention to and then somebody else catches that and it's like oh that's also important so yeah I feel like Ooh, not the camera battery dying, y'all. But um, to get back into Blitz by the Wolf, um, he, I th like I said, he sees the world. He must see the world in such an interesting way to then be able to bring this story to theaters in this way. Like, and then, what was it, 18 million opening opening day of, like, being in theaters? Like, I'm sure that they deserved it, period. Like, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that they didn't deserve it everything that they got from this movie or this yeah movie musical because it's it was just so brilliant and on top of that let's talk about miss fatima fatima robinson she y'all y'all know I'm, i said this last time y'all know i'm big on choreography she did an extraordinary job extraordinary job like i i strive to have the vision for moments like she created and it's it's so admirable because not everybody can do it. Not everybody that can dance can choreograph. Not everybody that, that can direct can choreograph. Not everybody that knows steps or that has a vision can choreograph. These things have to come together in a way that presents itself or l lends itself to the story. And she did nothing more than an amazing... She did all that and more of an amazing job. Like, I feel like... At the end of the day, um, they chose the right choreographer. You know, um, these moments. I believe it's the moment when they figure out when they figure out Shug Avery has um, is going to be performing at you know the little shop, the little club that Harpo owns, and it's like we see all the guys dancing, and I'm like, what? Like this, it's giving black newsies. Like if you were to black, if you were to blackify newsies and give them some jump splits and some toe touches, like it's that's what it, that's what it gives. And I hate that I have to compare it to something white, you know. But um, I feel like it just really gives that spirit of like we're doing this. Like, we have this, like, like oh, it's in an all-black cast. Oh, mostly black cast, sorry, y'all. But, yeah, it's just so amazing. It's so, so, so amazing. And I think when we think about pause real quick, um, go, jumping back to direction before I leave this topic, when we think about the work that had to have been done with these actors and actresses throughout, or in, in, yeah, throughout this experience, 
I think that that's also something to think about because of course like they're going to bring themselves and bring their work and bring their knowledge to the role but there also has to be someone to then cultivate that and put put that on the screen in a certain way and so when i think about moments of when uh daniel brooks is in that, that jail cell y'all it's just like oh my gosh oh my gosh like this shot of her and why and literally like looking at her and, and, she, and she just look she's just sitting there and she has this look on her face and it's like God, I feel for you, you know? Like, like there's nothing that, there's nothing that can replace that moments like that in theater and in, and in art in general. Like, ugh. Oh, another one is, I'm sorry. When we see, um, oh, that's another thing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, y'all. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to jump back real quick. The work that was done in the maturity and the understanding and the intimacy coaching that had to have been done throughout this process is something unlike any any other because it's a story that involves so much trauma and so much hurt and so much pain, but also the happy side of that. So like being able to work through those things has had had to have been um, some, a job well done, you know. Um, and then I want to jump back because I have a lot of respect for this man here. I have a lot of respect for this man. His name is Coleman Domingo. He played Mr. Y'all, I cannot, oh, not my eye jumping, sorry, y'all, but I cannot commend him more because I am very big on working through, um, working through material in a show and having respect, understanding, and knowledge on the character you're about to play. On top of that, their trauma, their understanding, you have to know more than the character knows. You know what I mean? Like, you have to understand the what the character doesn't understand yet. And Mr. is, a, is quite a character to play. I mean, he he like he is a a terrible person, you know what I mean? And he is hurt and he is misunderstood, but also the reason for that causes harm to most people in the show, you know? So or half the people in the show, and so it's like we really have to hone in on his maturity and his understanding for this role and his respect for the women he's playing this playing with in this show, you know? Like it, there's there's nothing more than I can say that that really allows me to understand you know what i mean like like he had to do some work and seeing him get up and do interviews with them side by side just like oh my goodness like he was he was playing that character and i know that must have been tough for him but he did it very well and i'm so sorry that i forgot to mention him with the cast because he amazing amazing a great great work but yes that's that's direction choreography and then uh intimacy coaching i guess gets into that too which is also direction and then uh, the continued part of the cast yes there we go last category here we go so last but definitely definitely not least is going to be our spectacle now our spectacle i i typically typically spectacle is something that's going to live in the technical world and yes but i also wanted to get into our spectacle moments throughout the show so the first i want to talk about the set was beautiful. Where they set the show was beautiful. I feel like it took us back, but not too far back. You know what I mean? Like it still it still gave um, 2023 production of 19 whenever's the color purple. You know, I feel like that that is something that's hard to do. You know, because it's like it's literally two different. Like literally, you have decades in between, so it's hard to do that all the time. But I think they really did a great job of showing it, and then creating a set that's also playable. You know what I mean? That you can play on, that you can dance on, that you can you can shoot from uncertain angles like I feel like they did that amazing and I think that they they knew what they were doing essentially the set designers they knew what they were doing um and that spectacle is amazing like when we think about all the breakaway stuff that they had to have and all that kind of stuff when it when it got a little dicey you know uh, when there was like a bar fight or whatever else was going on like all that kind of stuff like that they knew what they were doing and then also staging all of that the fight choreography that took a lot of work as well so that, those spectacle moments definitely I also think about the uh, moments when we have um Fantasia tapping on the table she better tap she better tap, but that's the spectacle. Once you add in st small stuff like that, um, and then we also have like these moments of lights when we see Taraji singing at Suge, and she's like just mesmerizing everybody. Like stuff like that is just so great, so so great. But also like some of the audio or uh, visual effects when we see that Mister's crops have dried up, and then we have beetles flying around everywhere, and it's like oh my gosh, stuff like that that's done. It's like it almost makes them make you makes you feel like you're in the field with them, and it's like ah, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, Spectacle was amazing. And yeah, so that's the color purple in my eyes. That's what I've, I've thought about it. I'm so glad to do reviews like this. I, I never thought that I'd be doing this with y'all, but I'm so glad that I am because it's, I feel like it's so, it's such an amazing, it's such an amazing thing that we can recap these moments throughout our 
theatrical, you know what I mean, timeline as artists. So yeah, um, if you haven't seen it, go watch The Color Purple. It's brilliant. It's brilliant, honestly. Or if y'all want a review of any other musical, you know, uh, let me know. I could like maybe watch a bootleg, whatever the case is, and we can do some of that. But um, I really enjoyed this review in particular, because like who doesn't want to review stuff about black people? Like, no, let me stop. But I just love experiencing black history in real time. You know what I mean? Ugh, it's amazing. That said, um, drop some comments. Let me know what y'all want me to do. Uh, I'm really big on that, y'all. I, I got a review. I got a comment to do Mean Girls. And guess what we're reviewing next? Mean Girls. So, um, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Remember, every great thing in this world be began with a dream. So, go after your dreams for those that are after you. I'll catch y'all later. Cue the music. <laughs>